Today on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan investigates cleaning stations where fish line up to be cleaned by other fish. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. Fish never need to take a bath because they live in water, but they do need to get clean. Instead of using soap, they rely on the assistance of another animal. It may come as a surprise that fish even need to be cleaned, but fish get cuts and scrapes in the course of everyday life. The cuts get infected and itchy. Parasites sometimes irritate their skin too. So even a fish needs a little skin care. That means a trip to a cleaning station. This is a place on the reef where one kind of animal cleans another. Cleaners are usually small fish or shrimp. Larger fish come in to get cleaned and wait for the attention of the cleaners. Sometimes fish even open their sensitive gills to the cleaners. Like a beauty parlor downtown, the cleaning station is a popular place. It keeps the cleaners busy from dawn to dusk with a steady supply of customers. When the cleaning station gets busy, customers have to line up and wait. Sometimes service can be downright slow. But patience pays off. This grouper's finally getting its gills cleaned. Cleaners are so important that even top predators like barracudas won't eat them, but line up and wait for service. This is mutualistic symbiosis at its best. Not only do the larger fish get cleaned, but the cleaners get a meal. They eat the parasites and dead skin from the fish they clean. And it's an unspoken rule. Nobody eats the cleaner fish. On the Great Barrier Reef of Australia, there lives a rather large fish called a potato grouper. You can probably see the resemblance. And they're big! This one is off to the cleaning station. Where a cleaner wrasse picks its nose. Talk about service! But the grouper doesn't really want me to watch. A moray eel doesn't like to leave her den during the day, so a pair of cleaner fish come to her. But sometimes the plucking of parasites hurts a little. Anemone fish don't dare leave the protection of their anemone to get cleaned by cleaner fish. And since the cleaner fish would be stung and killed by the anemone, they can't go to the anemone fish. What to do? In this case, a cleaner shrimp lives in the anemone with the fish, ready to spring into action whenever a fish needs cleaning.
It's not a life without difficulty, however. But fish are not the only animals to get cleaned. Sea turtles, manta rays, and even sharks line up for the services of cleaners. On a reef in the Philippines, a thresher shark with a tail as long as its body comes in from the open ocean to circle around its favorite cleaning station. Every morning, the sharks come here early for their cleaning. Tiny cleaner wrasses swarm around them for a few minutes. When the sharks are finished being cleaned, they leave the reef and swim back to the open sea. Nobody knows where the threshers go, but they'll be back to this very cleaning station tomorrow morning to be cleaned again. A few hundred miles away on a reef in Malaysia, a sea turtle is receiving the attention of a surgeon fish, which eats algae from her shell. Surgeon fish only eat plants, and the algae on this turtle's shell makes a delicious meal. And since all that algae can slow a turtle down, the fish is doing the turtle a favor by removing it. Everyone gets something out of this deal. When the tide is running at just the right speed in Yap, manta rays glide up to a coral head and hover in the current like a runner on a treadmill. This allows them to maintain a spot right over the cleaning station so they can enjoy the benefits of cleaners as well. The cleaners go right in and out of their gills, cleaning off parasites like copepods. But of course, the real question is, can I go to a cleaning station? I don't look like a fish, but it's worth a try. I find a nice anemone on the island of Bonaire with a cleaner shrimp looking bored with no customers. Maybe my hand will look like a really pathetic fish. It doesn't take long for this cleaner shrimp to get right down to business picking over my hand. It's looking for dead skin and parasites. I hope there are no parasites. It doesn't hurt, but it does tickle. As it turns out, humans can get a cleaning at the cleaning station, but only if there are no fish around wanting cleaning. So if I ever decide to live in the ocean permanently, I'll never need soap again. <laughs> <laughs>